Welcome to dealing with materials data. We are going to look at collection and analysis and interpretation of materials data. Uh, specifically, we are going to look at uh, how to use R to do these things. And this is the first module. This is the module to introduction to R. And we are coming almost to the end of uh, this module. Uh, so, I want to do a few more uh, data sets and uh, case studies using R to look at the data, import the data plot the data or manipulate the data and save the figures and save the data and so on and so forth. So, that is what we are going to do in this session. Um, so, 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 this is a session on case studies in importing and plotting data. Once you import the data, you can manipulate the data. Uh, you can manipulate the data uh, both the numerical data and the strings. So, I am going to show you an example of how we can do that and uh, we can save the modified data. So, sometimes after you have done the manipulation maybe you want to save this data and you can save it as a CSV file. Like I mentioned it is also possible to use uh, uh, fwrite and write it to a file, uh, but that is something that we are not uh, going to look at uh, at least at the moment. So, if it is needed later we will do it. So, so, that is the first one that we are going to do, take a data and uh, do some manipulations on the data and save the modified data. And then the second case study is to consider another data set. It is the same as the elements data set except that it has now also the Young's modulus data. Once you have Young's modulus data, we want to know how to plot a specific modulus that is modulus divided by density against the melting temperature. So, previously we just took the two columns and plotted, but now we want to do uh, some um, algebraic manipulations on the columns and uh, such modified data we want to plot. And uh, you might be wondering why uh, such plots are needed. Uh, these plots are very useful and uh, they are known as property charts or uh, Ashby plots and uh, they are used in learning about the properties uh, as well as in the selection of materials for engineering applications. And uh, some of you might have seen in uh, properties and selection courses uh, such plots and uh, so you will see how to generate such plots uh, for yourself. And um, so, so, we are going to use the melting point versus specific modulus uh, plot and once we do that uh, such a plot will also show you the uh, extreme points. Okay. So, so, we are going to plot and we are going to look how the points look like and specifically we are going to learn that iron is an extreme point and so then we are going to manipulate uh, the uh, plot in such a way that we leave out iron and, and look at what happens. And in the process uh, there is some programming thing that uh, one learns and I want to emphasize it at this point. Uh, whenever R returns any error message you should read it and take the corresponding action or if it gives some warnings you have to learn what the warning is about. So, this is what conversing with the machines means. So you have to read the messages, you have to understand the messages and you have to respond to, to the messages. So, it is exactly like uh, knowing a language. Uh, if you say you know a specific language, it means that if people uh, ask you something or people tell you something, you will be able to understand and respond to them. In a similar fashion, when you say I know our programming language, what is expected is that you are able to converse with the machine. If it gives some messages, uh, be it uh, error or warning messages, you are able to read, understand and respond. Um, I know that the tendency for uh, beginning programmers is to go look everything up on the internet and uh, then copy paste the solutions. Uh, it, it is sometimes useful and it can help you uh, pick things fast. Uh, but if you want to be a good programmer at some point it is uh, better to read the error messages and try to decode them yourself before taking help from the net. Of course, the net is a very good resource and you should utilize it. But before doing that it is useful sometimes to try it out on your own uh, because that way even when you get the solution from the net you will have a better understanding. So, it is important to read the error and warning messages. 
and, and you will see that uh, when we do uh, some of the manipulations it does give some messages and you should pay attention to those uh, messages. Okay. The second case study that we are going to do is for specific strength and uh, we will see that uh, for things uh, like Ashby plot sometimes the logarithmic scale is uh, needed and you will also see why property charts or Ashby ma maps are useful and uh, you are going to notice that uh, the materials are grouped um, and according to the kind of material it is. And you will also see some grouping according to geometry, for example, all fibers and viscous irrespective of what type of material they are, are going to fall in one way. And it also is very useful to notice the outliers and in this case the outlier happens to be a natural composite uh, um, namely wood. So this is what we want to do in this session, we are going to take some data in CSV format, we are going to import them. Uh, we are going to use ggplot for plotting and we are going to do uh, with a uh, uh, little bit of manipulation and we are going to pay more attention to the data and try to learn about the data by doing this. And so this is going to be our um, uh, almost the last session on introduction to R. Okay. So let us uh, go do that. Okay. So this is the uh, first one is to take the elements uh, data that we have already done. So, let me uh, open R and let me take these commands and put them here, right. So, elements, so we are going to read the CSV file uh, from data and uh, then we are going to order the elements according to melting point. And we are going to write this data into um, a new CSV file called elements melting point sorted, right. So that is the thing we want to do. And so you can see x, of course we can see x and you can see that it is sorted according to melting points. You know previously it was first aluminum or something. And, and you can see the original numbering, it was 1 here and then 2 was nickel and 3 was gold and so on, 4 was silver and so on. But that ordering has been changed because now it is going by the increasing order of the melting point. So it is 321, 426, 56, 60, etc. And so we have written a new data file uh, and that is there in the uh, elements TM sorted. So let us go there and see, uh, in the, so there is this elements TM sorted, so, so let us say okay. okay. So according to melting point they are now listed and this data is available and uh, to do this, okay. so I also have this name sorted, let me, let me remove this file. So I am going to remove this file. So in this directory there is no name sorted now, but let us do uh, sorting according to names and uh, write that file. Okay. So let us do that, it's here it is where we are going to do. Okay. So again we are going to read the data and we are going to write that data and we are going to. So the difference between the previous one and this one is that uh, previously we said okay, elements according to melting point you have to order and here we are going to say that order according to the names element, element, right. So what does it mean to say order according to this? As you will see it will alphabetically order it and the file will then be uh, written to a CSV uh, file. Okay. So now let us say X and you can see aluminum, beryllium, cadmium, chromium, copper, etc. So this is now alphabetically ordered and this is what would be written here. So element name started or CSV is available for us now 
and as you can see now it is uh, uh, sorted according to the alphabetical order. So, in other words it is possible to take uh, data import it and uh, manipulate it and you can manipulate numerical data as well as uh, strings. So, you can alphabetically order or order according to the numbers uh, increasing uh, decreasing or ascending descending order and then you can write them. So, the write.csv is the uh, equivalent of read.csv for writing csv files. And you can also, so help order will also tell you for example, if you want to do um, not uh, ascending order, but descending order what should you do ok. So, decreasing equal to false uh, which would mean that uh, increasing is true. So, so you can uh, order, uh, so should be uh, should be sort order be increasing or decreasing ok. So, that is what this uh, uh, does, so, so you can use the increasing uh, command and uh, so, so you can read the help file to get uh, more information, uh, but this tells you how to manipulate data and uh, order them and, and write them and so on and so forth ok. So, now let us look at the second data file uh, like I said there is an elements 2.csv data file uh, which has the extra information. So, in addition to this data it also has the ENX modulus and so we want to read this data and work with this data. So, this is what we are going to do ok. So, let us do this let us find out what this command is. Okay, so, we are going to read into elements the data from elements 2.csv and we are going to order uh, and the ordering is according to the specific modulus because elements x modulus by elements density is the specific modulus. So, we are going to order the data according to the specific modulus. Uh, this is just as an exercise, so it is not essential that you have to order and we are going to say specific modulus is this quantity ok that is what we are going to show uh, store and we are going to now use uh, ggplot2 to plot this uh, specific stiffness right that is the specific modulus versus melting point and we are going to save it as a pdf file. And so, the device off means that uh, it will execute all these uh, uh, plotting commands and then close the PDF file. And the plotting commands as usual, so it is ggplot, it says take the x data, aesthetics is x is specific modulus, y is melting point and color should be according to crystal structure. And the geometry is that it is a scatter plot, it is a point and you are going to label the points of course, according to element and there is a justification for the label. So, that is what this uh, plot commands are. Uh, so, this we have done several times and see uh, when you do this uh, now there is no plot that you can see here. Uh, that is because the PDF file actually wrote the figure here right. So, so, this is what the data you have um, and as you can see the specific modulus versus melting point uh, most of them fall in this column. Uh, there is nothing beyond the 0.05 or uh, 0.6 uh, uh, nothing beyond 0 0.05 actually uh, except for iron which is really really an outlier. So, its specific modulus is like that is modulus divided by its density uh, is uh, very high it is falling somewhere uh, beyond 0.15. So, as compared to all the other elements iron is really an outlier. So, this you can see. So, uh, so in other words the, the modulus with respect to density if you normalize by the density values different uh, elements have different densities and if you account for those differences then you see that the relative ratio is different for iron as compared to all these other uh, materials ok. And uh, within of course, a given specific modulus uh, now the melting temperature is different for different materials. So, you can see that there are many points like cadmium, beryllium, uh, titanium 
and uh, tungsten they are all falling almost on the uh, similar values, uh, but their melting points is uh, different. Okay. So, this is uh, um, what we see and so uh, and, and there was no plot because we plotted it to the file. Okay. So, let us now go back and do some more manipulation. Okay. So, of course, you can get a plot uh, by now after dev off if you put the command uh, then you will get the plot here. Uh, again showing that iron is a really, really an outlier here. Okay. So, let us do the next one. Okay. Uh, next one is that okay, so we want to take a closer look at these values and because that is an outlier we really do not want beyond this point. So, we are going to change the range when we are doing the x plot. Okay. So, that is what we are going to do now, let us go back and do it here. So, we are going to uh, read the, the, so the, the reading and uh, this thing has been done already in the data. So, probably we do not need uh, up to this, right. So, we have and uh, we also do not need this. Let us start with ggplot and so what we want to do is that okay, specific modulus versus melting point according to color, but now we want to restrict ourselves to 0 0.05, we do not want to go beyond this and geometry is point and labeling is according to element. So, everything else is the same as earlier uh, as here except that we have introduced a new limit for the x range, right. So, when you do that. It gives you a warning message. It says removed one rows containing missing values and removed one rows containing missing values for both the point and label. That is because it had the iron point and it had the label iron and uh, R is just telling you that when you did this uh, uh, rescaling of the x axis, you actually missed one data point. And uh, this is very useful because sometimes if you do not pay attention and if you just give some x limit or y limit in the process if you leave out some data, uh, it is better to know that we have left out some data and that is what R is uh, giving you as a warning. So, in this case we know we wanted that data to be left out, so it is okay for us. Uh, but in some cases uh, you should not inadvertently leave out data points and so it is always a good idea to read the warning messages and to know. Now because we have expanded uh, the x axis in the relevant regime, you can see that the data has spread out and uh, previously we thought that um, you know all these uh, points were at the same level, but now you can see that uh, cadmium and tungsten are actually slightly apart probably uh, tungsten and gold are at the same level, right. And uh, so, so this kind of uh, uh, gives you a better picture and a more closer look at the data and ggplot just by adding one more layer allows you to do that. Um, okay. So, so that is what we have done and this is what is shown here also. Okay. Um, okay. So, now we have done. Now, let us take uh, another data. Uh, it is called specific strength and here is the data. So, this data uh, file I have generated uh, by reading the, uh, the data table that is given in uh, one of the Wikipedia pages about specific strength and it has the material like concrete, rubber, copper, polypropylene, etc. As you can see they are of different material types, right? this is a composite, this is an elastomeric, this is a metallic material, this is a polymeric material and some of them are fibrous, some of them are synthetic fibers and so on. So, for example, spider silk is a natural fiber, silicon carbide fiber is a synthetic fiber and glass is a glass material uh, and so on and so forth. Okay? So, uh, and I have even put iron whiskers as synthetic fibers and, and so on and so forth. Then there is the density of these materials and the specific strength of these materials that is strength uh, by density. Uh, as you know strength is the, uh, the resistance that a material gives to permanent deformation or plastic deformation. Okay? 
So, so we want to know the specific strength, how do these materials uh, uh, perform. And as you can see the numbers uh, change a lot, I mean you have something that is going in thousands, then you have numbers in hundreds, then you have numbers uh, in tens and then you might even have numbers uh, in ones, right. So, there is a, a large range and by the way in these cases uh, uh, when the numbers were given in a range for some of these materials I have just taken the average to be the value uh, just to make life easy for us uh, when we are doing the plotting. And so here also you can see the numbers can change from uh, point something to uh, some large number uh, like uh, uh, like 8 point something. So, so there is uh, uh, 2 orders of magnitude here, here it is more it is about 3 orders of magnitude. So, the numbers vary a lot. So, it is difficult to get them all on the same play, plot unless you do uh, some manipulation which is to plot them on a logarithmic scale. Okay. So, that is what we are going to do. So, let us start let us uh, um, take this uh, data and load them. Okay. So, we are going to do the specific strength dot csv file we are going to load and we are going to um, order that and store it as uh, x. And now if you say x, yeah, so it has all this data, so it has the material type density and specific strength. Okay. Now we want to um, use ggplot and we are also going to use the library scales because uh, we want to change the x, y axis to a logarithmic scale. Okay. So, let us do this and let us plot and see what happens. So, ggplot we are using library scales as usual ggplot you have to tell what is the data, what is the aesthetics, it is density versus specific strength we want to do. And now we are going to color according to material type, metallic materials in one, glass in another, concrete in another and so on. And uh, coordinate transformation both x and y we are taking logarithmic axis. So, we are plotting on logarithmic scale and the geometry is of course points and labeling has to be done according to the name of the material. So, from the data it will take the name of the material and, and uh, do the plotting, right. So, let us do this. So, now you can see that okay, so it is a logarithmic scale obviously. So, 1, 2 and up to 10. So, so here you, you saw that it is uh, um, density was not changing some 0 0.7 to something, uh, but uh, here there was a large uh, uh, scale difference and so you can see that and, and the, the according to material type the coloring is done right composites elastomeric glass metallic etc uh, they are all so we can zoom and see okay so so you can see that there there are different colors and uh, there the moment you put it in colors you can see that all these polymers for example are clustering together all these metallic materials for example are clustering together and all the fibers for example are clustering together. I mean they are all of different type glass fiber, basalt fiber, silicon carbide, spider silk and uh, iron whisker. So, so they are all of different type of materials, but in terms of their uh, structure or geometry or uh, uh, morphology they are different. And you can see that they are also clustering together. So, there is an effect of the material type, there is an effect in which form that material is and both these come out very, very nicely uh, using these uh, property charts. And the other thing that comes out very, very nicely is that wood is really an out, outlier. Uh, so, in terms of uh, density, very low densities but specific strengths are comparable even more than I mean you know comparable to metals are more than and, and in, in terms of density there is a huge difference between uh, these, uh, but, but they, they do have a very good uh, specific strength. So, this kind of information is very useful and it is also uh, nice to have if you are trying to choose a material for a particular engineering problem and so that is what uh, this uh, plot does. Okay. 
So, yeah, so we are going to do some more plots. So, I want to okay. that is a log plot. Now, I am going to make it a logarithm to the base 10, right. So, it is possible to do that. So, everything is the same uh, except that the transformation is, uh, um, uh, is to logarithm to the base 10, right. So, you can do and you can get the data. Right. So, you can see now it is 10, 100,000 etcetera. So, it is on the uh, logarithm to the base 10. Okay. So, we can do the next exercise uh, uh, which is the same. Okay. So, once we have this let us do this and let us change the x limit. So, why do we want to do like we did earlier. So, we want to uh, remove some of these outliers and take a closer look at the other data. Because of this balsa uh, we are having this range and there is nothing much that is happening here. So, let us remove that and look at the closer data and again it tells you that uh, you know you have already uh, missing a point which we already know and the scale is already present of course obviously it was already present so we do not have to um, worry about it. Uh, but it is saying telling you that uh, x was already present so it is adding another scale for the x according to what we gave. So now you can see that things are now uh, spread out a little bit. And you can see again the, the greens clustering together, the blues clustering together and, and so on and so forth. So, it is really nice to have uh, this kind of uh, uh, property charts. Okay. So, so that is the figure we have generated and that brings us to the end of this uh, session. So, this uh, so what we have learnt now is that you can read data and before plotting you can also manipulate the data and plot the uh, manipulated data and do an analysis. So, this pretty much brings us to the um, end of the introduction to our session. We will have a summary uh, session and, and complete this module. Thank you.